You've probably heard of quantum computing before, but do you really know what it is and how it works? Don't worry, I'm here to help you understand this fascinating and futuristic technology in a simple and fun way. By the end of this video, you'll have a basic idea of what quantum computing is, how it differs from classical computing, and why it matters for the future of humanity. So, let's get started. What is quantum computing? Well, to answer that, we first need to understand what classical computing is. Classical computing is the type of computing that we use every day, with our laptops, smartphones, and other devices. Classical computers use tiny switches called transistors to store and process information. These switches can be either on or off, representing the binary digits 0 and 1. These digits are called bits, and they are the basic units of information in classical computing. Now, imagine that you have a coin, and you flip it. The coin can land either heads or tails, right? That's like a bit, it can be either 0 or 1. But what if I told you that there is a way to make the coin be both heads and tails at the same time? Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's exactly what quantum computing does. Quantum computing uses the principles of quantum mechanics, the branch of physics that describes the behavior of the smallest particles in nature, such as atoms and electrons. These particles can exist in superpositions, which means that they can be in more than one state at the same time, until they are measured. Quantum computing uses quantum bits, or qubits, instead of bits, to store and process information. Qubits can be made from various physical systems, such as superconducting circuits, trapped ions, or photons. Qubits can be both zero and one at the same time, or any combination of the two. This means that they can encode more information than bits and perform multiple calculations simultaneously. But that's not all. Qubits can also interact with each other in a special way, called quantum entanglement. This means that two or more qubits can share their states, even if they are far apart. This creates a quantum correlation between them, which can be used to perform complex operations and algorithms. So, how does quantum computing work? Well, quantum computing works by manipulating qubits with quantum gates, which are like logic gates in classical computing, but for quantum states. Quantum gates can change the state of a qubit or the state of multiple qubits at once. By applying a sequence of quantum gates, we can create a quantum circuit, which is like a program for a quantum computer. A quantum computer can run a quantum circuit by initializing the qubits in a certain state, applying the quantum gates, and then measuring the qubits to get the output. The output is usually a probability distribution, which means that we can get different results each time we run the circuit, depending on the random nature of quantum mechanics. However, by running the circuit many times, we can get the most likely result, or the result with the highest probability. So, why do we need quantum computers? What can they do that classical computers can't? Well, quantum computers can solve certain types of problems that are too hard or too complex for classical computers, even the most powerful ones. These problems are usually related to combinatorics, optimization, simulation, cryptography, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. For example, quantum computers can factor large numbers much faster than classical computers, which can have implications for breaking encryption and security systems. Quantum computers can also simulate the behavior of molecules and materials more accurately than classical computers, which can have applications for drug discovery, chemistry, and physics. Quantum computers can also learn from data and recognize patterns more efficiently than classical computers, which can have benefits for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Of course, quantum computing is not a magic bullet that can solve everything. It has its own limitations and challenges, such as noise, decoherence, error correction, scalability, and cost. These are the technical issues that quantum researchers and engineers are working hard to overcome to make quantum computing more reliable, accessible, and practical. It's still a young and evolving field, but it has already made some impressive progress and achievements. For instance, in 2019, Google claimed to have achieved quantum supremacy which means that they demonstrated a quantum computer that can perform a task that is practically impossible for a classical computer. They used a 53-qubit quantum processor called Sycamore to run a random number generation circuit in about 200 seconds, which they estimated would take a state-of-the-art supercomputer 10,000 years to do. 
Other companies and organizations, such as IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, Intel, and NASA, are also developing and advancing quantum computing technologies and making them available to the public through cloud platforms and online services. There are also many startups, universities, and research institutes that are contributing to the quantum computing ecosystem and creating new applications and innovations. Quantum computing is a fascinating and exciting technology that has the potential to revolutionize many fields and industries and create new possibilities and opportunities for humanity. It is also a complex and challenging technology that requires a lot of research, development, and education. That's why I'm here to help you learn more about it and hopefully inspire you to get involved and curious about it. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about quantum computing and what other topics you want me to cover in the future. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.